Hello everyone. So I started a series of videos where I'd like to explain some tips and tricks for your ASAT 104 certification, which I passed in March this year. For the moment, I will not go through all the questions, but I'd rather present the tricky things that I discovered and that will help you for sure during your exam day. So uh, let's go start it. Okay guys, so the first question that I would like to start with is are we able to move a resource from a subscription to another subscription, especially when the subscriptions are located in different regions? So I took this example as you can see here on the screen. I have two subscriptions. One is in North Europe, the other one is in South Central US. Each of them has two resource groups and I chose to have a storage account in RG1. My question is now, and actually this is a question that there are, for which there are high, there is a high possibility that you get the exam, so make sure that you understand it. Is am I, am I able to move the storage account to RG11? And uh, simply put, is yes, you can do that, even if you have two different um, locations. Uh, so uh, try, to, try to remember this is quite important. There is an exception to that. And I want to show you another scenario. So right now, instead of a storage account here, I have a web application. And I also have another web application in RG11. And in this case, what do you think? Can I move it? Um, can I move Toyota Web App next to Monkey Web App? Well, in this case, this is not possible. And that's because in the destination resource group, I already have a web application. So what you want to make sure that you remember from this is that you cannot move app service resources to a resource group that already contains web resources. Uh, this is uh, something that violates um, Microsoft web uh, rules. Um, so make sure you don't forget, uh, make sure you don't forget that. Um, so as you can see here, well, but of course you can uh, you can try that in the portal of, uh, as well, uh, in case you have um, a valid subscription. Um, but you're gonna see that in this case you cannot move it. Of course you can move it in RG10. There is no problem because you don't have any app service resources in here, but not in RG11. Uh, for the next question, we have this uh, specific scenario with a subscription and the resource group inside the subscription. And we uh, deployed several resources to load balancer, balancers, um, an internal one and a public one, and other resources like VMs, VNets, uh, and so on. The question that you can get is, what permissions Mark will need in this also Mark in this case will need if he wants to configure a backend pool to the internal load balancer. And of course, uh, you're gonna see. Uh, actually, this is a common practice in um, in Azure in cloud. You wanna assign the list privilege. Uh, to to any user, to any specific, uh, to do any specific request. In this case, he will need a network contributor role on the resource group one. And why that? Because he will need read access on the VM and on the VNet. The next uh, scenario, similar to the previous one, so be ready to get um, a scenario 
and then multiple questions based on that scenario. Very similar questions, but they want to understand, they want to make sure that you understood the principle behind that. In this case, so we have, um, as I've already mentioned, and as you can see on the screen, I have the exact, um, exactly the same scenario. But the question now is what permission Mark will need to configure both load balancers and so to allow a health probe to the public load balancer. And um, the answer is uh, the same one as in the previous question. He needs to be network contributor on the research group one. In this case, we have the same uh, load balancers, this basic one and the standard one, just in the previous example, and three VMs. And the question that you can uh, expect to have is to balance requests across the three VMs we have here using the basic load balancer. So keep in mind, um, this is for um, the basic one. And for that, you have to remember that the, um, so that for the basic load, ba load balancer, you'll need to have the three VMs in the same availability set or the same virtual machine scale set. The situation is a bit uh, different if you want to use the standard load balancer because in this case, the three VMs need to be in the same virtual NAT. Uh, so I'll go a bit before in this um, in the slide. So remember, if you want to use the basic load balancer, the VMs have to be in the same av availability set or the same VM scale set. Whereas if you want to use the standard load balancer, the three VMs need to be in the same VNAT. Uh, 